Good evening and welcome to the news roundup for Friday the 19th of January. Before we get into the news, please remember to like this video, share your views in the comments and share the video with your family and friends. Teach them! Always make sure the message has reached them! Now for the news in detail. Former People's National Party Member of Parliament, Julian Silveira, has been charged with the murder of his wife, Melissa. Melissa was found dead in the couple's Stonehill St. Andrew home on November 10. It was initially assumed that she had died from natural causes. As the police continue its investigation in the murder of Melissa Silveira, on Friday the 19th of January 2024, after a question and answer session at the major investigation division office about 12 midday Jolan Silveira age 52 years old land developer of 2A Diamond Court Stony Hill St. Andrew was formally charged by the police that is the major investigation division for the murder of his wife, Melissa Silveira. The investigation continues as we believe that there are other charges that will be laid against Mr. Silveira. On Thursday, Julian was taken into custody as a suspect in the case. Extensive forensic work has reportedly established a connection between Silveira's gun and the murder of his wife. The JCF continues to explore science as an important part of what we do. And in this investigation, all the sciences were applied from cyber, ballistics, um, telecommunications, all of those sciences were applied. And I will hasten to say that this case was not one of the easiest ones for us. But because there, are, there is a level of competence within the organization, we have the skill sets, very bright um, individuals who are well trained at a first world standard. And this has resulted into us achieving what we have achieved. Mr. Hilton may be able to speak now to some of the, the things that are being said uh, regarding um, the whole um, contamination of the scene. On getting the report at our division, we visited the scene and we observed some things that were not normal. As such, we employed the services of all our technical experts from ballistics, from the CFCD and other technical persons, and it has proven to us that some of our suspicions were correct. We continue to work with them. We have not yet completed all the work, but we have had sufficient information to move forward with the case, and we continue to do it. And, and I will say, in addition to what Mr. Hilton has um, spoken of, the, 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 the story about the renovation of the, the home is factual. It's factual. The, 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 the room has been completely tiled. We've seen where signs of paint job. Um, we've seen signs where items of furniture have been. The police investigation into Melissa's murder reported led to statements being taken from several people who visited the scene after news surfaced of her death. The police are moving to dismiss the notion that members of the constabulary were complicit in an attempted cover up. DCP Bailey says it was the police who had initially requested a post-mortem. In terms of when a body or when a person who is deemed to be dead is taken to a medical facility, the role of the doctor is basically to confirm if the person is dead. If the person is not dead, then automatically they will respond based on their own training. But the, the, the person who pronounces an individual dead is not even requested to attend court. 
because after that, it triggers other processes. For example, post mortem. So essentially, that's 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 it. So I heard the issue about how they, in relation to the instant case, why the doctor that pronounced the individual dead did not um, see that he he suffered gunshot wound. That is not the role of the doctor, really. It's the post mortem that will reveal that. It was the police that requested the autopsy to be done. So I know that the issue of cover up is very is a public discussion. But if the same police officer who went on the scene requested a post-mortem to be done, then in my own understanding and assessment of that, there is no, there is no inkling or inclination that there is a cover-up because the post-mortem really is to reveal the cause of death. Meanwhile, Sources have indicated that a statement was reportedly collected from PNP Vice President and Member of Parliament for Northwest Manchester, Mikhail Phillips. It is understood that the police also made arrangements to collect a statement from the wife of a high-profile PNP politician who visited the scene when news surfaced that Melissa died in her sleep. It is not immediately clear if that statement was collected. Statements have also reportedly been collected from individuals who Mr. Silvera is alleged to have told that Melissa had passed away in her sleep while she was in his company. The Clarendon police are reporting that 12 rifles and 13 imitation board guns were discovered at the office of an unregistered security company located on the premises of the Denby showground. Three men were arrested in connection with the fine. More from commanding officer for Clarendon, Superintendent Carlos Russell. About five uh, this morning, a uh, targeted operation was carried out in the Denby area, uh, in particular at the Denby showground, at a security location where 12 rifles, that is five 303 rifles and seven 22 um, air rifles were found. Also, an imitation Glock pistol was also seized. Three persons have so far been placed in custody whilst we continue our investigations. Well, the Clarendon police are continuing our anti-gang effort targeting the guns and gangs and we are asking the citizens of Clarendon who have any information that they need to speak to us. Meanwhile, the police say the fine resulted from an extensive investigation stemming from the arrest of two men after cops discovered an illegal firearm in the vehicle in which they were traveling along Waterman Street in Hayes in the parish on Wednesday. The police report that about 10 p.m. on Wednesday, a team was conducting an operation when they signaled a white Toyota Pro Box motor car to stop. The driver reportedly reversed and a passenger in the front seat was observed acting suspiciously. The police took action and searched the vehicle, and a firearm was found under a mat on the floor on the passenger side. A security guard of a content district Yorktown address in Clarendon came from the front passenger seat and claimed ownership of the firearm, but stated it was a BB gun used for work purposes. The driver and passenger were taken into custody. Police say further investigations led to a raid at the unregistered security company office at the Denby showground where the additional weapons were seized. A third man was subsequently taken into custody. Investigations are ongoing. A reputed gangster who the police claim was implicated in the killing and video recorded burial of a pair of siblings in Westmoreland is one of two men who were killed in a running gun battle with the police in St. Catherine on Thursday night. He has been identified only as Gangbang, who police sources claim was a prolific contract killer. The name of the other man has not yet been released by the police. The gun battle reportedly started in Spanish Town and ended in Greater Portmore. Two illegal guns were reportedly seized at the scene. The operation was driven by intelligence and carried out by the counter-terrorism and organized crime branch of the police force. 20-year-old Kerrick Modi and his sister, 22-year-old Kenisha Modi, were identified by their mother after a video that went viral on social media last December showed them being buried in a shallow grave. 
They were reportedly missing days after they were seen at a fast food restaurant where they had gone to drop off a package containing $10,000 for their mother. It is suspected that they were killed over a dispute involving money from Lottery Scam. A major police investigation is now on the way into the fatal shooting of 63-year-old Sandra Risden, a senior paralegal at Nunes, Schofield, DeLeon and Company on Washington Boulevard in St. Andrew early on Thursday morning. Police sources said that it was clear that the attack was a hit on Risden, but up to press time, investigators had not yet established a motive for the killing that plunged a law firm into deep mourning for the well-loved and respected woman. However, a source said that Risden may have been targeted over a matter regarding a family-owned house which she had responsibility to manage but was not a beneficiary. The matter, the source said, was in court last week. Risden's killing left the staff at the law firm overwhelmed with grief. Devon Blair, known more widely as Avatar, a man the police claims a dangerous gangster, was convicted on Thursday of gun-related charges, setting off celebrations among cops in Clarendon. Blair pleaded guilty to illegal possession of firearm and two counts of shooting with intent in the Manchester Circuit Court, abruptly ending his trial, which began before Justice Judith Pusey on Monday. He is scheduled to be sentenced on the 29th of January. Three previous gun-related charges against him collapsed because witnesses refused to cooperate with authorities, law enforcement sources disclosed. He is one of Clarendon's most notorious gangsters, claimed the source. Prosecutors Natalie Malcolm, Deputy Director of Public Prosecutions, and Sean Nelson were prepared to lead evidence that Avatar engaged members of a police team in a fierce gun battle when they attempted to arrest him at a house on Bailey's Avenue in Clarendon on April 15, 2021. He was apprehended when he reportedly jumped from a second floor window to escape cops and was injured. Two illegal guns were seized at the scene one of which had his DNA on the trigger, according to evidence in the possession of prosecutors. The swift action of the Westmoreland police has led to the apprehension of one of the suspects in the brutal murder of 19-year-old Enrica Chambers at a Top Road Little London in the parish on Thursday morning. Commander for the Little London and Negril Police Division, Deputy Superintendent of Police Sean J. Mitchell, said that the 18-year-old suspect was nabbed shortly after the incident. Mitchell said a manhunt is now on the way for the second suspect, who is still at large. According to the police, Chambers was at his sister's house about 9 a.m. when an argument developed between him and the two suspects. The two men left and returned with machetes in hand and attacked Chambers, who ran, but was later chased and several chop wounds inflicted on him. He was rushed to the Savannah Lamar Public General Hospital where he later succumbed to his injuries. And on the entertainment scene, reggae singer Pluto Shervington has died at age 73. Shervington is known for hits like Iman Barnia and Ram Goat Liver and That. It is understood that Shervington died on Friday in Florida after he was admitted to hospital on Thursday. The record artist started his career in Jamaica in the 1970s but has been living in the United States since the 1980s. Shervington started his career as part of the band Tomorrow's Children before achieving solo success. And that is it for your news roundup for today. We would appreciate you liking this video, leaving a comment and sharing the video with your family and friends. Have a good evening and see you next time.